Hello parents, friends, family members, significant others, and people that wandered into the wrong building. <laughs> Welcome to the 2017 University of Arizona College of Fine Arts graduate commencement ceremony. Here at the college, we have all grown accustomed to introducing ourselves by name, followed by our current year of schooling and our respected majors. Well, in just a few short minutes, I will no longer introduce myself as Elisa Neal, third year, 3D Extended Media Perspective, but rather Elisa Neal, artist, Masters of Fine Arts degree graduate. I speak for each of the graduating students when I say we would not be here today without the dedication and determination of the faculty or the tireless efforts of the administration and staff. Through the guidance of our mentors and committee members, as well as the camaraderie and the highly competitive members we consider our peers. The impact they have had on our future is only outshone by the support that we have received from the people in this audience. We are leaving here a group of visual artists, dancers, musicians, actors, and actresses. The fact that you stood by us when we chose art school over med school and our dreams over ever receiving a paycheck <laughs> makes you the real heroes of this story. While society often pokes fun at the idea of art school, statistics show creative art students rank fifth in workload, hours spent, and difficulty in obtaining their degree, beating out engineering and even law students. Most of us have spent a minimum of seven years working towards walking across this stage today. The only thing preventing them from accomplishing that goal at this point is me finishing this speech. <laughs> Dramatic long pause. <laughs> so please join me in standing to welcome the faculty and graduates of the College of Fine Arts.
Good afternoon, everyone. Please be seated. The Fred Fox School of Music Faculty Brass Quintet. Thank you. Let, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and let's say thank you and uh, congrats also to uh, Elisa, who, who gave the welcome. Um, thank you. Good job. I'm Jory Hancock, I'm Dean in the College of Fine Arts, and I wanna welcome uh, everyone, um, a special welcome to family members and friends. This is 2017, this is May, this is commencement. So, let's celebrate. Those of us that have been uh, to graduation ceremonies have become familiar with hearing bits of advice. Uh, here you are, at one of the last events of your college career having a degree or two already under your belt, and you're about to step in, a step over the threshold of independence. And mom and dad say, thank you. By now, you understand the wisdom of listening because seated with you today are the very people that got you here, and along the way, they offered wisdom, and you took it. So it seems right that we start by having you, all of you graduates, stand, you were just standing, but do it again. And let's say congratulations to your success. So we're going to talk today a, a lot about partnerships. So as you are seating yourselves, <laughs> let's have the faculty stand and recognize the faculty for the partnership they have played with all of these phenomenal students. Faculty, please stand. <laughs> Okay, we're going to need the house lights again because the collaboration extends even further. Our graduates here today have been supported by friends and family, many of whom have made multiple trips to campus and are here again today. For this important occasion, let's have everyone out there who had a role in this success story please stand. Thank you so much for what you've done. You will be offered advice again. Many times from this day on, take advantage of that when you can. One opportunity is in front of you now. As you hear from a teacher and artist who has distinguished herself while at the U of A and who gave distinction to her students by challenging them, guiding them, and moving them on to the very professions to which they aspired. You are part of that story and here to tell it is Dr. Elizabeth Garber, professor in the School of Art. So Dr. Garber, if you'd join me. Dr. Garber. <clears throat> Dr. Garber research, uh, researches ceramics in relationship to material culture and education, holding an MFA in ceramics in addition to a PhD from Ohio State University. Garber was a self-supporting clay artist who worked in community and school settings for many years before becoming a professor. She has published widely in journals and anthologies and was a Fulbright professor at the University of Art and Design, Helsinki, where she researched craft education and taught courses on postmodern art education and art criticism. During the spring of 2010, she spent her sabbatical in South Korea researching ceramics education. A distinguished fellow of the National Art Education Association, Garber's awards include the Edwin Sigfield Award for Outstanding and Internationally Recognized Contributions to Research, the June King McVie Award for Distinguished Contributions to the profess uh, Profession of Art Education, a Beyond the Call of Duty Award from the College of Fine Arts, 
the Roy and Stardust Johnson Family Mentoring Award from the University of Arizona, recognition as a Pacific Division of the NAEA Higher Edu Educator of the Year, recipient of the Kenneth Morantz Alumni Award from Ohio State, and the Mary Rouse Award from the Women's Caucus of the NAEA. That's a mouthful. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Elizabeth Garver. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Jory Hancock and School of Art Director Colin Blakely for this opportunity. I also want to thank my close friend and former NPR editor Aileen Ellis for helping me shorten what I have to say. Probably we should all thank her. Um, today is a day when we make memories and also honor them. Graduates remember tryouts, rehearsals, performances, new studios, first critiques, projects, drafts, papers, and you celebrate theses, thesis shows, dissertations, final projects, screenings, doctoral performances. Congratulations. In choosing to be part of graduation ceremonies, you have chosen to shape your memories. Memory provides us with a sense of self. What other memories will you choose as you go forward? What we celebrate today is success. Our success, however, grows out of successes and failures, so let's celebrate the failures, too. Samuel West, a researcher in Sweden, reminds us not to gloss over the brilliance that we like to celebrate by ignoring the struggles and failures that got each of us here. In innovation, 80 to 90% of projects fail but we usually hear about and dwell on the successes. Some of the failures that will be featured in West's Museum of Failures, set to open in June, are Harley Davidson's short-lived hot road perfume, the Nokia Engage that combined a smartphone and gaming system, but required that you take it apart to change games, and Trump the Game, a Monopoly-style board game that bombed. <laughs> we, we remember the importance of the military's DARPA in giving us the internet, GPS, and speech translation. We could also attend to some of their failures. Telepathic Spies, for example, was a psychic spy program that involved research to see if telepaths and psychokinetics could carry out remote espionage. The jury is out on some of their current projects, such as the use of artificial intelligence as teachers. All of these companies, programs, or people are successful, so the point isn't really to ridicule failed products and projects, but to emphasize the importance of embracing trial and error. It is the practice, the mistakes, and the efforts that got us here and that will be mirrored in all of our futures. This is why I'm so enamored of Cy Twombly's etching titled F. It suggests a series of trials, much of, most of which were rejected. It suggests the mistakes, erasures, and years of effort that hover beneath a finished work. I like to understand the route to anything we do as also involving play. One of the things that French thinker Jacques Derrida explored was play as an expression of motion. There are kinds of play that result in something we want to hold on to and others we want to release. But whatever the outcome, the process is absorbing, stimulating, ludic activity. If you visited the Exploratorium in San Francisco, you were invited to play. Founder Frank Oppenheimer turned to art as, in his words, an absolutely appropriate venue for play and also for breaking the rules. And maybe that's why so many of the exhibits engage intersections of science and art. The Dutch historian Johan Housinga 
found analogies with music that he described as leaping, skipping, and dancing. Maybe that's why musicians play instruments. Hauzinga found in the visual art the playful creativity of mind or hand and suggested play as the growing point of the arts. But it's not just those of us in the arts. Most of us are looking for fresh experiences, meaningful expressions, new interpretations and understandings. If you aren't an artist, musician, filmmaker, composer, screenwriter, dancer, arts teacher, or scholar, don't worry. Play can be found in our passions, whether they be games, sports, books, stories, daydreaming, comedy, fashion, or wonder. That is really in activities that lift us out of the mundane. But we do hope you'll engage in the arts as makers, viewers, and or audiences. I've talked about celebrating today as a culmination of successes, failures, and play. As a small percentage of the population who are educated in the arts, it behooves us to find ways to use the arts to give back. Social thinker Hannah Arendt talked about how most of us limit ourselves to day-to-day -day personal goals. How do I get in a certain gallery or a particular orchestra? How do I get this across to my students? Where will I publish this paper? Will another degree help my future? These are very real concerns, and they need to be thought about. However, to dwell only there limits our thinking. Arendt is suggesting that we de-normalize what we hold as normal and engage in the world we are creating. We can argue that we are doing this in the arts already by thinking creatively and deeply, teaching imaginatively, and getting people to pause, if for a moment, to feel something. I'd like to suggest pushing ourselves a little further to bring our abilities in the arts to problems within our communities. We are the legion of arts workers that can give back, like the scientists on Earth Day this past April who stood up for the truths of science as vital to the future of the planet. It's not that you have to commit your whole life to giving back, although some people here undoubtedly will. This is about acts that give back in ways that become part of the rhythms of our lives. It might be volunteer teaching to underserved populations. Did you know that 80% of arts graduates teach in some form? It might be using your vacation time to work on water filters for Potters for Peace, or contributing to programs like Lead Guitar, part of CFA in schools, which is part of this college, that holds guitar classes in public schools with low access to the arts. You might knit caps for cancer patients and teach someone how to knit one while you're at it. You could set up an art materials reuse exchange as a way to cut down on the waste of materials so prevalent in making art. Giving back is a type of effective labor where play and process and failure and pleasure are involved you will be on a margin of change that will change you. When you engage in your community, your world expands. Enjoy this threshold, celebrate today, your memories and the failures and the successes that have led to them. Live today, play every day, and contribute to the future that makes a better place. Thanks for your attention. What a great word, play. Thank you, Dr. Garber. And um, uh, again, uh, any advice you, you get from the stage today, uh, take it with you. Uh, even though uh, you have spent many, many years becoming educated and getting to this point where you're getting degrees, uh, the, the learning goes on. So uh, this isn't your last chance, but it's a good chance. We'll have a showcase next from the School of Art. This showcase video 
presentation delves into the thesis work of Master of Fine Arts student, Alisa Neal. January 1st of 2016, I woke up in the back of my truck in this very strange place and I think subconsciously I knew then that I needed a different way of documenting my life. So I just kind of reached down, grabbed a handful of soil and just drove off with it. I have this obsessive desire and I traveled the world. I came back with over 1,680 sample bags of soil. And I am asking the viewer to get rid of this dirt, which I realized I no longer need to hold on to. My name is Elisa Neal. I am a third year graduating student in the 3D Extended Media program. And this year I've been working on my thesis, which is this giant installation behind me. This is completely different than what I've ever done because it's actually me releasing control of things instead of kind of grabbing them and holding onto them tightly. So after coming to terms with the fact that I have obsessive compulsive personality disorder, I've been on this track of meditative, medicated, therapeutic state where I realized that this dirt kind of had this hold on me, but I can't actually bring myself to be the person that gets rid of this dirt, so that's where the viewer interaction comes and takes place. The big thing for me when I was doing this was like every day having to dig those soil samples out from underneath my fingernails was kind of this moment for me, and so I wanted the viewer to be able to, to touch these things. So when the viewer walks up, they have the option of, of picking any of the bags off of the wall that they would like, dump the soil into their hands, and then there's actually this nozzle system that comes down from the ceiling, suck the dirt up out of their hand. The dirt travels through a series of tubes and finds its way outside of the gallery and just kind of disperses itself back into the world. All in all, I just hope that the viewer feels the importance of what this piece used to be. Once they let the dirt go, realize that they're kind of participating in something a lot larger than that too. I have not released my own bag of dirt yet and I'm sure I need to, right? I think I think I probably need to. And while I know these things aren't directly connected to my existence and I still have these memories and these experiences, it's just kind of sad to see them to see them go. Good afternoon, almost evening. My name is Martina Schino. I'm the Associate Dean in the College of Fine Arts, and we'll now present the Outstanding Graduate Teaching Assistant Awards to our graduates. Selection criteria, criteria for these awards include scholarship, leadership, citizenship, and community service. In addition to the outstanding graduate teaching assistants from each school, we have also selected one outstanding GTA to represent the College of Fine Arts. Our first outstanding graduate teaching assistant is from the School of Art. Will Elisa Neal and our nominating professor please stand? Elisa is graduating with a Master of Fine Arts degree and in his nomination letter, uh, Professor Gary Setzer writes, Alyssa runs a tight professional ship because she is extremely organized, but more importantly, she is skilled at pulling the best out of students, and she has managed to do so while also establishing an environment that is inclusive, conducive to learning, and fun. The artworks produced by her students have consistently been amongst the finest student artwork coming out of the first year experience division. Elisa's inspirational leadership plays an enormous factor in her students' ability to achieve their successes. She is an artist that gives back to her community. She is an inspiration to her students, her fellow graduates, and to me. Elisa, please come forward. And next up, the outstanding GTA in the Fred Fox School of Music. Will Elsa Kate Nichols please stand? 
Elsa Kate will be graduating with a doctoral degree in performance. In her uh, nomination letter, Professor Brian Luce writes, Elsa Kate's tenure thus far has been marked with continual success in our artistic leadership. Prior to her DMA studies, she received her master's in flute performance at the U of A, where she served as the flutist GTA for the Fred Fox Graduate Wind Quartet, Quintet. As a result, she has been one of the principal featured performers of the Fred Fox School of Music over the past three and, three and a half years. Elsa Kate has taught undergraduate students ranging from freshmen through seniors. She even successfully taught her first flute cohort in the Muse 350B course with a fantastic student average. Of all the students I've taught over the past 20 years, Kate easily fills the top single percentile. Congratulations, Elsa Kate. Please step forward. And next, the outstanding GTA in the School of Theater, Film, and Television, Will Leah Mednick. Please stand. Leah is graduating uh, with a Master of Fine Arts in Design, Technical Production, Costume Design. In his nomination letter, Professor uh, Richard Tuckett writes, as a costume designer, Leah has visually defined characters and created wardrobes for a variety of productions. Her work on these productions shows her understanding of costume as a key component of storytelling and her keen eye for period and character detail. While a graduate student here at the U of A, she has been selected for competitive internships at Glimmer Glass Opera and the Shakespeare Company Summer Theater Festival. Leah maintains a positive classroom and work environment, serving as a role model for, and for professionalism for her students. Leah is a talented theater artist and craftsperson and an excellent student and has become a leader and role model in the School of Theater, Film and Television's costume design and production area. Congratulations, Leah. <laughs> and next, the outstanding DTA in the School of Dance and the College of Fine Arts. Will Shelley Suzanne Hawkins and our nominating professor please stand? <laughs> Shelley is graduating with a Master of Fine Arts in Dance. In her nomination letter, Amy Ernst writes, Shelley Suzanne Hawkins was selected as the School of Dance Outstanding Grad Teaching Assistant from the School of Dance for many reasons. Several of these reasons go far beyond her skills as a teacher in the classroom. Not only has Shelley been a superior teaching assistant for our dance program, she is also beautifully embodies the equal emphasis placed upon both artistry and scholarship that is so deeply fundamental to the mission of the College of Fine Arts. Through her teaching and also by her own example, she encourages her students at the university and also in the Tucson community to understand and value the critical impact that art, art making and the support of art making will forever have on their lives. She makes a difference in the lives of her students because of this personal commitment to a higher, more profound goal. Shelley has always been what we call a lifelong learner and this quality consistently manifests itself through her work and through her approach to her art and dance education. Through her teaching, creative work and generous service to the community, Shelley inspires those around her to share generously of oneself, one's knowledge and one's art. Congratulations to Shelley. Congratulations to all of the outstanding GTAs. Now the College of Fine Arts will now begin the presentation of degree candidates. Uh, the origin of the academic regalia are believed to have originated in the 12th century, 
The robes, colors, trimmings, and patterns you see are traditional and reflect both the, de the degree and the discipline. For doctoral students, navy blue is the transitional color for the Doctor of Philosophy degree, and pink is the traditional color for the Doctor of Musical Arts degree. For master's students, brown is the traditional color of the fine arts, and pink is the traditional color of music. There are only a few select times in the academic calendar when the university designates occasions for students and their families and friends to come together on campus. The most cherished of these times is now, during commencement, when a student's perseverance and accomplishments are, are honored. Each name is a story of dreams, countless hours of hard work, study, practice, performance, and creativity. It is this accomplish that we now celebrate. Parents and friends, uh, each school within the college uh, will be called separately and to approach to the stage. Uh, we've also hired a professional photographer uh, who is here to capture the event. If you wish to take your own photographs, we just ask that you uh, do so after the program and also keep the front of the stage uh, clear for the students to be able to return to their seats. Will Professor Carlton Bradford, Dean Jory Hancock, and Director Colin Blakely, and the School of Art faculty please come forward. And will the doctoral and master's student degree recipients from the School of Art also please come forward. Gladys Estralita Garcia, Master of Fine Arts, Design, Hooter Gary Setzer. Japheth Ajit Paul, Master of Fine Arts, Art being hooded by Professor Ellen McMahon. Shanur Shafkat, Master of Fine Arts, Art, being hooded by Professor Ellen McMahon. Janelle Lorraine Krauss, Master of Fine Arts, Art being hooded by Professor Angie Zielinski.
Leah Nicole Lumen, Master of Fine Arts, 2D, being hooded by Professor Angie Zielinski. Jonathan Barry Marquis, Master of Fine Arts, 2D, being hooded by Professor Angie Zielinski. Aaron Mary Nordeman, Master of Fine Arts, 2D, being hooded by Professor Angie Zielinski. Megan Lynn Jordan, Master of Arts, Art History, being hooded by Professor Larry Busby. Amelia Rose Francesco, Master of Arts in Art History, being hooded by Dr. Julianne Plax. Natalia Marie Gabrielson, Master of Arts, Art History, being hooded by Dr. Larry Busby. Andrew Carlton Haight, Master of Arts, Art History, being hooded by Dr. Larry Busby. Would Dr. Paul Ivey step forward? He will be hooding Hannah Elizabeth Soltes, Master of Arts, Art History.
No, you go. <laughs> Caitlin Amendares, being credited by Dr. Paul Ivey, Master of Arts, Art History. Elisa Marie Neal, I'm not going to read that. Master of Fine Arts Art being hooded by me. Dr. Elizabeth Garber, step forward, please. Lino Paul Garibaldi, Master of Arts, Art Education, Community and Museums. Dr. Lisa Hochtritt, step forward, please. Anna Brooks Ramsey, Master of Arts, Art Education, Community, and Museums. <laughs> In Jong Yoon, Doctor of Philosophy, Art History, and education, art and visual culture education, being hooded by Dr. Lisa Hochtritt. <laughs> Would Dr. Elizabeth Garber step forward, please? Shauna Sinkamani, Doctor of Philosophy, Art and Visual Culture Education. Charles Dodu, Doctor of Philosophy, Art History and Education, Art and Visual Culture Education, being hooded by Dr. Elizabeth Garber. Sibel Duzinli, Master of Arts, Art Education Certification, being hooded by Dr. Lisa Hochtritt. <laughs> and Dr. Pia Cunio, please step forward. Jesse Jean Woon Park, Doctor of Philosophy, Art History. <laughs> Oliver Enrique Padilla, Master of Fine Arts Photography, being hooded by Professor Sama Reina Al Shaibi. Helen Gaudence, Master of Fine Arts, Photography, being hooded by Professor David Taylor.
Next up, will Dr. Uh, Susan Knopfs, Dean and Director Jory Hancock and School of Dance faculty, please step forward. And also the Master of Fine Arts recipients from the School of Dance, please come up. Micah Chermock, Master of Fine Arts Dance, being hooded by Amy Ernst. <laughs> Maxwell McClure Foster, Master of Fine Arts Dance, hooded by Professor James Clouser. Kaylee Claire Jensen, Master of Fine Arts, Dance, hooded by Professor Amy Ernst. Jonathan Wayne Dolby, Master of Fine Arts, Dance, hooded by Professor Amy Ernst. Marquez E. Johnson, Master of Fine Arts Dance, being hooded by Professor Michael Williams. <laughs> Shelley Suzanne Hawkins, Master of Fine Arts Dance, being hooded by Professor Amy Ernst. Professor John Brobeck, Dean Jory Hancock, Director Ed Reed, and the Fred Fox School of Music faculty, please come forward. And will the doctoral and master's degree recipients from the Fred Fox School of Music also please come forward. Ivar Nicholas Fohas, Doctor of Musical Arts and Guitar Performance, being hooded by Professor Thomas Patterson. Lindsay McHugh, Master of Music in Music Education, being hooded by Dr. Brian Luce.
Travis John Slater, Doctor of Musical Arts in Choral Conducting, being hooded by Dr. Bruce Chamberlain. Gavin Michael Eli, Master of Mu Pardon me, Gavin Michael Ely, he's only in my class. <laughs> Master of Music in Choral Conducting, being hooded by Dr. Bruce Chamberlain. Andrea Louise Steele, Oops, sorry, Doctor of Musical Arts in Clarinet Performance, being hooded by Professor Jerry Kirkbride. <laughs> Amaret Brianna Languel, Doctor of Philosophy in Music Education being hooded by Dr. Matthew Mugman. Alexander Meredith, Master of Music in Music Education, being hooded by Dr. Norman Weinberg. <laughs> Michelle Marie Perrier, Master of Music in Vocal Performance, being hooded by Dr. Kristen Dauphine. Mariana Mevins Vidal, Master of Music in Harpsichord Performance, being hooded by Dr. Pamela Decker. Joel Walker Pierce, Master of Music in Organ Performance, being hooded by Dr. Pamela Decker. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Arasim, Master of Music in Harp Performance, being hooded by Dr. Angelo Versace. Elizabeth Louise Soflin, Doctor of Musical Arts in Percussion Performance, being hooded by Dr. Norman Weinberg. <laughs> Richard Puso, Doctor of Musical Arts in Percussion Performance, being hooded by Dr. Norman Weinberg. <laughs> Kevin Allen Cross, Doctor of Musical Arts in Percussion Performance, being hooded by Dr. Norman Weinberg.
Corey Driscoll, Doctor of Musical Arts in Trumpet Performance, being hooded by Professor Edward Reed. Christopher Ray Harold, Doctor of Musical Arts in Saxophone Performance, being hooded by Dr. Angelo Versace and Dr. Edward Goodman. <laughs> Lin Chen Long, Master of Music in Music, being hooded by Dr. Matthew Mugman. Yu Jia Luo, Master of Music in Choral Conducting, being hooded by Dr. Bruce Chamberlain. <laughs> Morgana Marissa Ortiz, Master of Music in Trumpet Performance, being hooded by Professor Edward Reed. <laughs> Willie Aaron Rice, Master of Music in Composition, being hooded by Professor Moises Paiwanski. Rachel K. Knight, Doctor of Musical Arts in Harp Performance, being hooded by Professor Thomas Patterson. <laughs> Mayu Nomura, Doctor of Musical Arts in Piano Performance, being hooded by me. <laughs> Glenda Patricia Courtois Garcia, Doctor of Musical Arts in Piano Performance, being hooded by Dr. Rex Woods. Omaris Maldonado Torres, Master of Music in Choral Conducting, being hooded by Dr. Bruce Chamberlain. Sole Oliva, Master of Music in Vocal Performance, being hooded by Dr. Kristen Dauphiné. Brenda Willerbys, Doctor of Musical Arts in Bassoon Performance, being hooded by Dr. William Dietz. <laughs> 
Philip Joel Hill, Master of Music in Bassoon Performance, being hooded by Dr. William Dietz. Kyle Jordan Edwards, Master of Music in Bassoon Performance, being hooded by Dr. William Dietz. Clifton Kong Weston, Master of Music, Wind Band Conducting, being hooded by Dr. Chad Nicholson. Ariana Danielle Eniguez, Master of Music in Vocal Performance, being hooded by Dr. Kristen Dauphiné. Sun Young Lee, Doctor of Musical Arts in Vocal Performance, being hooded by Dr. Kristen Dauphiné. Chia Chun Ko, Doctor of Musical Arts in Piano Performance, being hooded by Professor Tannis Gibson. And will the Master of Fine Arts degree recipients from the School of Theatre, Film and Television please come forward? <laughs> along, <laughs> along with David Morton, uh, Dean Jory Hancock, and director Bruce Brockman. Julián César Hernández, Master of Fine Arts, Theater Arts Design Technical Production, being hooded by Professor Deanna Fitzgerald. <laughs> Andrea Marlene Pratt, Master of Fine Arts, Theater Arts Design Technical Production, being hooded by Professor Claire P. Rowe. Leah Louise Mednick, Master of Fine Arts, Theater Arts, Design, Technical Production, being hooded by Professor Bruce Brockman. <laughs> Ms.
Ruth Richardson, Master of Fine Arts, Theater Arts, Design, Technical Production, being hooded by Professor Ted Krauss. <laughs> Jack Edwin Meng, Master of Fine Arts, Theater Arts, Design, Technical Production, being hooded by Professor Ted Krauss. Amy Sue Hazel, Master of Fine Arts, Theater Arts, Design, Technical Production, being hooded by Professor Bruce Brockman. Give our students one more round of applause. Earlier this afternoon, you were introduced to the outstanding GTA for the College of Fine Arts, Master of Fine Arts dance student Shelley Hawkins. She received her BFA in dance from the University of Arizona in 2011. She has danced professionally with Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, Artifact Dance Project, and in addition has been teaching dance for over 15 years in Tucson and Colorado. She started the teen dance company at Tucson Dance Academy where she produced a benefit concert for youth on their own, a local charity that provides assistance to homeless teens. In 2015, Shelley returned to the U of A School of Dance to pursue a master's degree with emphasis on choreography and performance. During graduate school, Shelley volunteered as the Oscar uh, Lifelong Learning Institute, where she created a lecture series on creativity and dance composition. This semester, Shelley performed a historical solo entitled Recesses, choreographed by modern dance icon Bella Lewitsky. Shelley's recent thesis was inspired by visual artists and incorporated a collaborative light installation, which was itself a piece of art. After graduation, she will be traveling to Germany and Italy to perform and assist Sam Watson in teaching American jazz dance. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Shelley Hawkins uh, for her uh, address. Shelley. <laughs> The following is a passage from Twyla Tharp on how to be lucky. Be generous. I don't use that word lightly. Generosity is luck going in the opposite direction, away from you. If you're generous to someone, if you do something to help him out, you are in effect making him lucky. This is important. It's like inviting yourself into a community of good fortune. Graduates, we're so lucky to be here tonight, surrounded by so many generous people. This is undoubtedly what a community of good fortune looks like. To our family, friends, mentors, and teachers, our ability to reach our potential is a direct result of the luck you have bestowed upon us with your generosity. And on that note, a few thank yous are in order. Thank you to my husband, Eric. Your love lifts me up. Sorry, I'm a crier. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> your patience and grace is such a gift. And your kind heart and generosity is boundless and is why I fell in love with you in the first place. To my parents, Bill and Jeanette, and my sister, Julie, thank you for your unwavering belief in me forever and always. I love you. <laughs> to all the spouses, significant others, family members, and best friends, we are so grateful for you. We had no idea grad school was going to be this hard. <laughs> it's all consuming, and we know you felt our absence at times. 
Thank you for sticking with us and loving us through this journey. Thank you to my fellow graduate students uh, for inspiring me and to be a better artist, teacher, and person. I've learned that you can't earn a degree on your own. <laughs> and I'm grateful for the relationships we've built with each other. Thank you to Amy Ernst for your support, advocacy, guidance, encouragement, and above all, example, not only for myself, but for all the dance grads. To say that you are our advisor is not nearly enough. And to the entire dance faculty, and to all the faculty here tonight, your influence on our lives is profound and immeasurable, and the example you have set for us will be a guiding force as we continue to teach and pass on the wisdom and artistry you have so generously shared with us. We are all part of this big picture, part of the map, puzzle, timeline, a part of the collective whole. As artists, it's our responsibility to speak our own truth uh, through our work, but it would be wrong to think that we became who we are without recognizing the influence earlier artists have had upon us. We don't create art in a vacuum. The history of dance lives within my own flesh and bones, and it lives through me whether I'm performing a classical work or generating brand new movement of my own. As a jazz and modern dancer, I find myself in a unique position compared to, say, a painter, whose legacy may stretch back to the Renaissance. Because these styles of dance are relatively young and American-born, I find myself incredibly close to the roots, separated from the founders by mere generations instead of centuries. I am one branch on the modern dance family tree. Loie Fuller, Isadora Duncan, Ruth St. Dennis and Ted Sean, Martha Graham, Lester Horton, Bella Lewitsky, Amy Ernst, me. I'm humbled by this legacy and recognize the debt I owe not only to my predecessors, but to my own students. I want to pass on what I know to propagate our collective knowledge of dance, to ensure that my students can succeed as dance artists no matter where they go, and to give them a sense of being connected to that big picture. I'm sure this room full of artists can relate to this sentiment, because this is what graduate school is all about. I'm grateful that the School of Dance has the vision to help us honor our dance legacy by performing works from great dance icons and our own esteemed faculty, while also providing us the priceless opportunity to produce our own work. Choreography is exploration. The magic of choreography for me is that I am constantly learning and relearning who I am, what interests and excites me, and finding new ways to go beyond previous expectations of myself. I love to give in to the physical laws of our planet and to oppose them. I want to feel my body from the bottoms of my lungs to the tips of my fingers and radiate more than I absorb. This, to me, is my ultimate job as an artist, to be able to give back to the world more than I took. I've been inspired every day working with dancers from across the world who have come to learn and collaborate here at the U of A School of Dance, the College of Fine Arts, and with the greater Tucson community. From musicians to set designers, across all of the schools in the College of Fine Art, there is so much potential for collaboration and inspiration. We have got more, th more than enough to be generous with. Graduates, we've made it through some life-changing years of intense work, self-reflection, self-doubt, and success. We finally get to step back and see how our hard work has paid off. But Dean Joy Hancock once said to us that the reason graduate school is so hard is because it's meant to prepare you for the work ahead. It's not necessarily going to get easier. Every generation of artists faces their challenges and limitations, and we are no different. The journey ahead is going to require a massive group effort as we fight to save the NEA, to remind the world that art is not just a luxury or a hobby, but is essential to our survival. Art saves lives. <laughs> yes. <laughs> art saves lives, changes lives, 
connects lives, and is the legacy we leave behind for future generations of humanity. We must speak truth to power now and be ready to articulate our passion for our work, to advocate for the arts, and to do so with focus and fervor. But if we look to our past and the struggles fought by our predecessors, we can see that the best way for art to thrive as an essential part of the American culture is to be generous. To our students, to our colleagues, to our audiences, and to the world around us. So let us now move forward. <laughs> Sorry, almost there. <laughs> let us now move forward and share our work and our knowledge with others to bestow some luck upon our neighbors with generosity in mind and in heart, and to build our own communities of good fortune. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. So we've heard some themes, partnership, play, gratitude and generosity. And now we're gonna hear some music. So to introduce the next piece, we have director of Fred Fox School of Music, Ed Reed. Good afternoon and congratulations, graduates. Michelle Marie Perrier, is a native of Washington State and is a rising singer in lyric coloratura music. She has performed several leading operatic roles, including as Constance in Dialogue of the Carmelites, Le Fieu in Ravel's The Child and the Spells, Adina in The Elixir of Love, and The Queen of the Night in Mozart's The Magic Flute, all with the University of Arizona Opera Theater. Ms. Perrier has made several solo appearances, including in Stravinsky's Lenos, Vivaldi's Gloria, and Bach's Magnificat and Cantata 21. Michelle has won numerous awards, including first place in the 2016 Riemann competition, first and second place in the Marguerite O competition, and first place in her division of the National Association of Teachers of Singing in 2013. During the past two summers, she has participated in the Saarburg, Germany Music Festival. This summer, she will join Opera Neo in San Diego as Medea in Cavalli's Giasone, and then she will return to Tucson as the music director at St. Francis Cabrini Church, as well as singing in the Arizona Opera Chorus. Today, Michelle will be performing Johann Strauss Jr.'s Voices of Spring Waltz, Opus 410, accompanied by Spencer Miller. Please welcome Michelle and Spencer.
Thank you, Michelle and Spencer. Wow. What a great way to wrap up the ceremony. And if you're not smiling now, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> so as a reminder to students and guests, this event can be viewed and played back at live.cfa.arizona.edu. The video of today's graduation convocation will be <clears throat> available in the week following the ceremony. I survived the piano. <clears throat> the opportunity to be educated is such a privilege. And again, we congratulate you on making the most of that opportunity. Here's something that may help you with context in terms of what you have achieved. If you were graduating today with a bachelor's degree, you would be among only 7% of the world's population with such a degree in hand. You can imagine then, as you go higher to a master's or doctorate, that percentage drops even more and the air becomes more rarefied. I say this not to emphasize pride, even while we are very proud of you. I say it to encourage humility because certainly it is an opportunity and an accomplishment that so few people in the world get the experience that you have had. So yes, let's celebrate, and with a great sense of legacy, have all of our masters and doctorates stand one more time. House lights up, congratulations to all. Stand up, folks. Okay, please be seated. Before we close, let's acknowledge the tech team and student services team and volunteers for all their hard work in, in planning and supporting this program. Their names are up on the screen. A special note of thanks to Cynthia Barlow, Dal Hodges, Dave, Dane Velasquez, and their technical support for today's ceremony, as well as our CFA ambassadors and CFA student assistant team. And a special thank you as well to Lindsay Clark and Ryan Burton Romero for planning this special event. It's a lot of work. Thank you so much for all that you did to make this uh, ceremony happen. Thank you, they're right here. And finally, as we close, let's thank the UA Brass Quintet for our recessional music. Take it away.